Well, I'm out on the street and look at these beautiful pear trees that are blossoming and blooming. Just lovely. There is our son, Laura, trying to break through. He's in a haze today. Hail to the sun, Laura. He's trying to shine on through. Well, this morning I was setting up to do the video on Lord Dionysus. You know, we were going to talk about making a crown for my statue of Lord Dionysus. Well, the vines that I bought uh, didn't quite work out like I thought they would. I thought they had some wiring in them that I could easily wire that hook them together or wire. They don't have wires, so I'm going to have to get a different type of vines to make the crown. So we'll do that video again. But I thought today we would talk about a magical and mystical principle. So come on along. So we're going to go to lunch today and just chill out for a little while. And we'll talk about the mystical principle of the white star of witchcraft. And then after lunch, when we get home, I'm going to show you how to set up a shrine to the mystical white star of witchcraft. So we got a lot of stuff to do today. And I'm glad you guys are coming along for the fun. You know, as I've always said, I'm a believer in signs. And as I'm walking down here through this sidewalk, look what I spy on the ground. Do you guys see that? That is a glove, a blue rubber glove, latex glove. And you know what that means is be careful with your hands. So like the people, the, the authorities are saying, you know, wash your hands, be attentive to surfaces, things like that. So that little blue glove is a sign for us today. So, you know, I always say be observant because the universe brings you messages and signs. But only those who are, take the time to look find them. So there's one of our signs today. So there you go. Let's go on along. You know, I'm so thankful that I live right next to this little creek. With all the craziness in the world, when I just come down here to the shore and look at this water, it's so tranquil and beautiful. It reminds us that we have to have inner calm and inner peace at this time. Don't give in to panic. Keep your calm. Know that the Spirit leads you. You can hear the birds tweeting. We're definitely getting into spring. <laughs> and I'm ready for it. You know, I'm choosing today to walk on the earth. It's very grounding and it connects me back to Mother Earth's energies. Over there is the bank path that I normally walk on. But I just feel like I really need to connect to the earth. And Tubies, look, we have to greet one of our friends along the way. Here is the all-seeing eye tree. I don't know if you guys can see his eye. Let's see if I can zoom in on that here. It's hard to see, but he has an eye. The lighting's a little challenging today. But if you look in the middle of your screen, you can see the beginnings of an eye. This is our tree that's all seeing. I call him Mr. Cyclops. Hello, Mr. Cyclops. Isn't it great? Now, of course, in the coronavirus time, we're not supposed to touch anybody. But I think it's safe to hug a tree. So go out and hug your local tree. Because if you hug your local tree, you're giving love to the tree. And the tree gives love to you. And all the world's better for it. As we look across the woodland here, we'll notice that a, quite a bit of green is starting to emerge. We can watch for the face of the green man. And what is it that Psyche Bob always says? Green equals life. That's right. So as we look at all the greenery emerging, we know that life is emerging as well. And that's pretty cool. Look, here's some wild onions growing. Now, if you guys like that saying, green equals life, check out my merch store because I now have a t-shirt that says green equals life. 
and uh, you can get it at below this video if you don't see the the shirts below your video go to my main channel page at spirit channel and you'll see a store tab at the top and that's where you can buy shirts so remember green equals life speaking of green equals life here's our little tree that has all the moss on it and the moss growing down here by its roots we like to come here and observe this I think this is a hangout spot for the Fae but we know that here green equals life pretty cool Well, Tubi's here. I am safely ensconced in my luxurious booth at La Casa. Just waiting on some food, and uh, I thought we'd take a look here at this book, Wicca Candle Magic. Because I said we're going to focus this afternoon on working with the magical White Star of Witchcraft. Now, I have another book somewhere in my house, Lost, by Doreen Valiente, where she talks about working with the White Star. But that's okay. I know what it says, but... I wanted to read it to you, but I can't find the book. But I thought, well, part of the ritual today is going to involve white candles. So I thought I'd read to you from this book called Wicca Candle Magic, because we're going to use some white candles when we get home. So let's, uh, let me find this here. Okay, so in this book, Wicca Candle Magic by Jarena Dunwich, here's a chapter, chapter three, Symbolism of Candle Colors. And it says... Before casting spells or performing any kind of magic, the color of the candle should be chosen carefully according to your purpose. For each color possesses a different energy vibration and attracts certain influences. Okay, so here it is. So white candles, which we're going to use in our white shrine to the white star of witchcraft. White is used for consecration rituals, meditation, divination, exorcism, and spells that involve healing, clairvoyance, truth, peace, spiritual strength, and lunar energy. Now we're going to, we can actually do all of that using the white star uh, altar. So anyways, so first thing you want to think about when you're setting up your white star a witchcraft shrine is get some white candles now we're going to keep this really simple and I'll show it all to you as I said when we get home how we're going to do it but one of the key elements is white candles so that's not hard to get so let's explore the mystical white star of witchcraft well you know I got my trusted friend Louis here my Louis Vuitton bag and inside of it I put a special little magical pouch today and we're going to look at what's inside of this. So let's open this up. I got one hand holding the camera, so it's kind of hard to do this. Ooh, and look what comes out. Ooh, I think we got some treasures here. Ooh, there's another one. <laughs> what I've got here are some various magical pentacle pendants. As a, as a Wiccan, I wear this symbol often because this is a sign of our religion, the sign of the Wiccan faith. Contrary to what a lot of churches would have you believe, this is not a demonic and evil and wicked symbol, but it is a sign of power and protection. Now, I know somebody's going to say, well, wait a second, Bob, those are silver pinnacles. I thought we were talking about the white star. Well, in uh, magical terms, silver and white are interchangeable. Silver is considered to be a white metal, and in heraldry, for example, when people do heraldry, which makes coats of arms, they often interchange white and silver. So um, I was looking for a pendant recently online to wear a white star. I haven't been able to really find any that I like that are white, you know, like pure white stars. So I wear silver, and silver is the same as white. But you'll notice here that this is the pentacle, and the pentacle is a powerful symbol of witchcraft. It's worn by witches as the sign of the faith, and it's also used for protection. And so today we're going to, as I said when we get home, we're going to show a shrine that I've created to work with this energy. But one of the other ways you can bring it right into your life immediately is to get a silver pentacle, or if you can find a pure white pentacle, uh, like one that's enameled or something, and white, that's cool too. 
uh, but mine are silver. Now this is one of my newer ones I just got. It's got a, a moonstone, a rainbow moonstone. And moonstone's a whitish stone. This one has a little slightly bluish reflective tint. But it's set in silver. And this is one of my domed pentacles. So if you look at it from the side, you see it's got a curvature. It sets up higher. But that's kind of cool. It's like the dome that's created when you cast the circle. So know that uh, this symbol, the white pentacle, is great and powerful among the witches. So you might want to, you know, if you're working with Wicca and want to do this, you should probably get yourself a magical pentacle to wear. In addition to those pentacles that I just showed you, this is the one I'm wearing today, which is a white star. Now, it doesn't have the circle. You don't have to have the circle. But what's important is that you have a five-pointed star. That is the sign of power among the witches. And, um, you know, if you like the idea of the white star, you could even get zirconias or diamonds. This has white zirconia. So this, again, reinforces the color symbolism of white that we use in this this form of magic so there's my my pentacle today with white stars set in silver i love this um so there you go uh two bees my lunch came look what i got i got a tasty reuben on rye and some chips and a cold coke ah psycho bob's loving life uh, Tubies, that lunch was great. A Psycho Bob has a sweet tooth, and I had to do it. It was a special. Look what I got. <gasps> chocolate mousse cake. Oh, is that decadent drizzled in chocolate sauce? Oh, my God. <laughs> and, of course, they refilled by Coke. Psycho Bob's going to be a sugar high. <laughs> but that's okay. I need it today because we got magic to do. After we do this, we're going home. And do some magic. Oh my god, sin and decadence. Mm -hmm. I love it. Well, I tell you, that lunch and dessert was amazing. Well, it's time to go home, so let's go home and do some magic. Time to blink home. And blink! Psych Bob's home. A little bit of movie magic there. <laughs> now you'll notice behind me here, there's this giant red star. This is also a powerful magical symbol. And in fact, I think in the coming weeks, we're going to do a series of uh, on Wicked Wednesday about what the different star colors mean. So we have the white star, red star, there are blue stars for magic, purple stars. So we're going to explore color theory and magic around stars. But today we're going to focus on the white star. And Tubies, behold the mystical altar of the white star of witchcraft. <gasps> now let me give you a little tour of this altar so you can understand it. The theme of the altar should be predominantly white. Now I have a mixture here of white and ivory. You'll notice this beautiful star. This is actually done in an antique ivory, but ivory is a shade of white, and so you can use ivory. The candles are also ivory. I know somebody's going to write to me and say, Sega Bob, I have everything that's white, but it's an ivory white. Can I use that? Absolutely. And somebody's going to say, well, I have a mix of ivory and white. Can I use that? Absolutely. So basically, to create this altar, it's very simple. The minimum requirements that you need are you need a white altar cloth. Now, I bought a white tablecloth. I bought this online for $6. It's brand new, pure white, um, you know, tablecloth. And I draped that over a table here. And so you want to have a white tablecloth. And then you want one white candle, uh, preferably a votive candle. So I have a white candle, a votive tea light here, and I put it in a crystal holder. Any of your candle holders or things that you put on this altar should either be white, um, clear, like crystal clear, or silver. Okay, so we have one, you need a white tablecloth, one white candle, and then you need a star. And 
We'll talk about that in a minute. But I also have what I call the God and Goddess candles. You don't have to have these because the star is the main focus. But if you want some extra candles, you could flank your star with white candles as well to run for the God and one for the Goddess. I do that. You don't have to do it. The minimum, though, is just the cloth, one candle, and the star. But I've added these other candle holders. Now, again, notice that these candle holders are done in silver. You don't have to have silver. Uh, if you have clear glass or white ceramic, you can use that as well, or crystal. Um, I happen to have silver. So try to keep the theme of this altar very light. Clear glass, silver, and white. That's the only color scheme that should be on it, okay? Now, here you'll notice our big white star. It looks yellow here because I don't have the best lighting in here, but it's actually kind of an ivory white. Um, it's a little brighter white than it's showing on camera. But um, your main center of your altar should be a star. Now, this star I bought is called a barn star, and you can buy these online. I think I paid like $6 for it, and it's made of metal. In fact, I'll pick it up here and let you see it. It's a white, it's painted white, it's made of metal, um, and you can buy these online. Just look up Barn Star. These were big in the American um, farming community. They used to make stars like this to literally put on their barns for a sign of good luck. It's funny because even the most devout Christian farmers believed in the Barn Star. But it was believed that these stars would protect a barn, protect its animals, protect it from storms and lightning and fire and all that sort of stuff. And so it's a long-standing American historical tradition to put stars on barns. But you can still buy these decorative barn stars, and they come in all sizes. This size, I think, is a 12-inch star, but they get up as big as like 48 and 60 inches. So you could have a giant wall size one if you want. But for right now, I just have a small little one. And what I've done is I've propped it up here. I have a little stand a plate display stand and that's what it sits on now if you want if you have a wall area you could also hang it on the wall behind the altar okay so you want to have your altar sitting up against a wall or you know well you don't have to but if you're going to hang it on the wall you want the altar up against the wall and you need a white cloth one white candle and a star and the idea is that this altar represents the flaming white star. It represents the white light of witchcraft, that we of the Wicca do good magic, we do powerful spells of blessing and protection. White is traditionally known to be used in protection magic as well, because it is the light, uh, white light that diffuses all negativity and evil. Now, I know I'm going to get somebody out there say, oh, Psychic Bob, you're being racist, you're against other races you want to promote white people this has nothing let me clarify this has nothing to do with the white race or white people it represents light and light is naturally a white light and so this is for all people of all races and all cultures okay so it's not a white person <laughs> altar i want to clarify that because i know somebody's going to think that so there you go now to use this magic white star power it's very simple. So basically once a day you want to come here and light your candle. As I said, you should have one candle sitting in front of the star. Now you actually can have more than one, but traditionally it's just one candle to represent the power of the star. But if you want to fill your altar with white candles, uh, you can certainly do that, okay? So, um, but here we are. Basically, you light your candle, and then you say, White star of power, give me your light. Protect all here tonight. And you can do this to pray over your household for a blessing. Um, if you have somebody who's far away that you're worried about, you can put their name under the candle. Just put it under here, put a little paper, and slip their name under it, and know that as the candle burns, you're invoking the rays of light from the star. Now what's really important when you work with the white star of magic is that you actually visualize the power coming from it. So focus on it, see the power, the rays of light coming off of that star. Visualize a blinding, brilliant light as if that star is glowing 
brilliantly. I forgot to light our illuminator candles on each side, so we'll light those candles as well. And now we have our God and Goddess illuminator candles lit as well. And so you can see our altar is blazing in light. Now, I would recommend that if you want to set up the White Star Altar, that you keep it very simple. Uh, the power is in the star, and I would not clutter up the altar with your ritual toes. Like, this is not an altar that you put your athames on, your chalices, and your statues. The only thing that should really be on this altar is the star and at least one candle in the white cloth. Now, you can add more white candles, but that's all you should probably add to it. And then each day you go to your altar and you just light the candles. You visualize the white star and know that this white star, you know, can go with you wherever you go. Like, say you visualize it as you're walking down the street, visualize the star floating in front of you and it will clear your path. Uh, you don't actually have to bring the star with you, just carry its light with you psychically and visualize it. But know that when you come home, you always have this wonderful little sacred shrine that's set apart. And so as I said, I encourage you, keep your white star altar very simple. I would not clutter it up with statues and flowers and books and, you know, stuff. Just very light, very simple. And if you do that, you'll be amazed at how much power you draw from the white star. It's a great thing to invoke in times of danger. You know, so right now, as everybody's afraid of the coronavirus, White is used for purification and healing. So you could visualize the white light of the star emanating to those you love. Send that light out. Uh, know that it protects you and your loved ones. You know, keep that candle burning. Uh, the candle that burns directly in front of the star, I call that the vigil flame or the vigil light. And you keep that going to illuminate um, the star and to illuminate your hope and connection to the white light. So guys, there you go. This is one way to work with the magical white star of witchcraft. And I'm curious if any of you have ever done this yourselves or seen it or heard it. It's kind of an older witch tradition. You don't hear about it much anymore, but it's something that I like and decided to bring into my life. So tell me, have you brought this into your life? Also, one of the things that you can do or ways you can use your white star uh, altar is take your jewelry, you know, specifically your white star jewelry that you wear to attune to the star, and you can place it on the altar at night to charge it. So like, I'm going to put this beautiful jeweled pentacle here, right here next to our vigil light, underneath the gaze of the white star and know that it is protected and blessed. And so make it a habit each day just to spend a few minutes for the mystical white star and bring its power and mystical energy into your lives and you will be blessed. Oh, one more note I might want to add about the white star. If, for example, you're not able for whatever reason to find a white barn star. You don't have to use a barn star. You can make your own white star. You can paint it on cardboard, for example, paint a star and paint it white and have a little piece of cardboard with a star. Or you can cut it out of cardboard and paint it white. Or even if you don't have that, just make a paper star and prop it up on your altar. Um, so yes, there are many ways to create the white star. So this is just one way. And, uh, you know, I'd be interested to hear what you come up with. So tell me about what you're, you're going to create for your White Star Altar. Well, guys, I've had such a good time. Thank you for being here. Please help me out if you've liked this video. Like it, thumbs up, favorite it, share it with your friends, and hit subscribe. Be part of our channel. So tell me in the box below. Um, are you interested in working with the mystical white star of witchcraft? Oh, also I forgot, if you go to my website, psychicbob.com, the link will be below in the info box, um, I have over there a white star image that you can download. If you can't find a star that you want or don't know how to make a star, 
You can also download a White Star image for your White Star altar at my website. So go to PsycheBob.com, scroll down, and you'll see it'll say the magic white star of witchcraft. It's a pentacle in blazing white. And you can right click on that, save it, and then print that out, and you have a star also for your altar. So, guys, thanks for being here. I love you. We'll see you back here tomorrow for Vlog Thursday. Until then, may all of you always blessed be.